Today I'll be walking through the process of setting up EmuDeck on your Android device. With EmuDeck, you won't need to make any additional adjustments, it's going to automatically configure everything in one go. It's even going to set up some standard hotkeys for us, so we don't even have to configure that in RetroArch. Additionally, the installer offers a few different hardware specific configurations to choose from, and it's compatible with multiple front ends. Let me show you how to get it installed. To begin setting up EmuDeck, navigate the main site and locate the installation script located just under the Features section. Go ahead and copy the Termix code and download the application from the provided link. To get started, you'll need both the script and the Termix application to run the script, which can be downloaded on the main website. Go ahead and run the download when that's completed. Once the installation is complete, open up Termix and paste the copied command into the command line. If you don't have a keyboard connected, you can hold your finger down on the screen until the menu appears to paste. Then press A on your device controller or enter on a keyboard to initiate the script. This will download all the prerequisite files that we need to get started. This also might take a little while depending on your internet speed and the device you're setting this up on. I am speeding this next part up just a little bit so you can see this is not exactly how quick it goes, it'll definitely take longer on your device. Once the files have been downloaded, you'll be prompted to allow Termix to save the files on your device to proceed with the installation. Grant permission to proceed. The keyboard may appear several times, but you can dismiss that quite easily by pressing the down key. Press the A button when you're ready to proceed with the installation. Use the D-pad and the Y buttons to select your options, then press A to confirm your choices in the following menus. We want to go with custom here. On this next menu here, you want to choose whatever Android device that your device is closest to in performance. Mid-tier devices like the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus would probably be closest to the Odin Lite, with higher tier devices probably on the Odin. You can customize this to some degree later, but you definitely want to choose the device that's closest to your configuration. Since I'm using the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, I'm going to go ahead and select the Odin Lite configuration. Go ahead and tell it where your ROMs are stored. After that, we need to select which emulators we want to install on our device. If you're selecting these with the device that has a controller built in, use the Y button to select your options and the D-pad to navigate up and down. Make sure to leave RetroArch selected at the top, but the rest is personal preference. Once you're sure, you can proceed to the next step. Make sure that you have all the emulators that you want selected, as it's going to automate all these installs. Double check the list just to make sure that you didn't miss anything before proceeding. We won't configure the bezels for now, but I'll make sure to cover that later. After that, we need to configure the aspect ratios. By default, it's going to try to keep all the original aspect ratios. We could select 3x2, but that's going to cause slight distortion, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep the original aspect ratio, including for all Nintendo systems. One of the coolest features of this setup is that it allows us to use any front end we want. I like using Daiji Show, so I'm going to go ahead and select that option. However, it supports all popular front ends on Android. Once we've selected our desired options, the tool then proceeds quickly to install the configs for our emulators. When it presents the emulators to install, it's important to always select the package installer to avoid overriding what Termex is doing. By default, Android doesn't allow us to install apps from unknown sources, so make sure you go ahead and grant those permissions to continue with the installs. Once RetroArch is installed, press the Done button, and if an on-screen keyboard appears, press the Back button to get rid of it. Go ahead and press A and it'll continue with installing the next emulator. EmuDeck is just going to keep going down the list of all the emulators you selected. If an emulator is not available on the Google Play Store like the Citra MMJR versions, it'll be downloaded from the GitHub page. The tool is going to automate and download everything in one go, making it super convenient. The Pegasus installer, which also installs through Termex, does the same thing but it only supports that front end. It has quite a few extra features though compared to EmuDeck for now, like scraping your ROMs during the setup process. If you're interested in the future, I can take a look at that as well to show you how that's installed. EmuDeck is going to need to copy over all the config files as well, so this is definitely going to be a longer process. The amount of setup time and tinkering this is going to save us though is well worth the wait. The last few config files are just copying over now, so we'll get to the fun part of the process next, setting up our front end. This is definitely the easiest setup process I've seen so far on getting your emulation device up and running. 
The front end should download and install relatively quickly, then we're able to proceed to the next step. You can swap the front end over quite easily down the road, so don't worry too much if you don't like what you've selected. One last final screen message will tell us to move our games to the emulation folder on our SD card under the crack system. We're going to also need to download the latest cores from Retroarch ourselves. Hopefully future versions of this tool will automate the core installs, but for now we're going to need to do it ourselves. To proceed, we need to transfer our games and BIOS files over to the correct folders. As for me, I already have them on my device, so I'm just going to be moving them to my SD card by navigating to the correct folder. You'll see all the correct systems under the emulation folder, making it easy to move new games here. I've got around 42 gigs of games on my device, which is way more than enough for my needs. To install any new games down the road, drag and drop them into these folders and rescrape your system in the front end. A lot of these folders are going to be empty, but that's alright, we don't need to put something in each one of these. As you can see, I have all the games that I want in each one of the systems that I've moved over. As usual, I only really recommend about 100 games for each system at the most because there's just too many to go through that way. Swapping back over to Termix, if you haven't already, you can go ahead and exit this screen. When you press the home button, you'll be asked to select which front end you want to use as your default. Choose Digi Show or the one you've selected and set it to Always. If you miss setting it to the default as always, you can press the home button again and reselect it to the default. Now that we moved our games over and we're in the front end, let's open up RetroArch in the app section and grant it access to our storage. This is required for RetroArch to save files to our device and to access our ROMs library. There should be two Two prompts here that pop up that we need to accept to give it storage permissions. By default we get a simple user interface, but let's go ahead and swap that. I think this other driver menu makes it a lot easier to navigate. Press the gear in the bottom right corner to open up the settings menu. Open up the driver section and scroll down till you see the menu driver. We want to swap this over to XMB. With that swapped over, press the home button and scroll down to the configuration file. It's always a good practice to make sure you save your configuration file before exiting RetroArch. Make sure to save this as current configuration and then press the home button and quit RetroArch. Go ahead and start RetroArch again after confirming and saving the changes and you'll see a more modern interface. I find this menu looks a lot cleaner and it's way easier to navigate, at least for me. First thing we need to do is to go down to the main section here and load a core, then download a core. Because EmuDeck doesn't download these automatically, we need to go select the cores that we'll need for our gaming and RetroArch. A list of recommended cores that I like to use will be provided in the description below. If you plan on using standalones for some of these, you don't need to download the cores for those systems. These are all of course your personal choice and you might want to download different ones depending on which device you set this up on. I'm going to go down this list here quick and just select the ones that I want on this device here. As RetroArch is free, I tend to use this for most of my emulation. Once you're done, return to the main menu and select the configs and make sure to save the current configuration. Go ahead and quit RetroArch after that. Now it's time to link our systems and ensure everything is working properly. If you're using DigiShow, select Download Platforms and select the platforms that you want on your device. Since your selection may vary, I'm just going to go ahead and select what I want on my own device here. You can add new systems to your device quite easily through this menu. I'll make sure to cover that later in the video. Go ahead and finish selecting the rest of the systems you want and make sure to tap import on the bottom. The systems will then be added under the platforms tab but we still need to link the games. Additionally, Daiji Show provides a very simple theme at first but I'll show how to customize it later. First let's check the settings menu to ensure everything is set up correctly. Click the settings at the top to open up the menu. In the main settings page, open up the library option first. The first option is Sync Entire Library, which manually reloads all the ROMs if we add new games in the future. Clear all disjointed items is useful if you need to update your library after removing multiple games at once. I do recommend selecting Remove All Disjointed Items on Sync under Options since it keeps our library up to date a lot better. Additionally, make sure to disable player warnings. Although there are other options in here, I recommend sticking to these for now. There are a couple other options that we can go through the other menus and look at as well, but I think this is pretty much all we're going to need right now under the library settings. Let's hop into the appearance section menu and take a look and see if there's anything that we need to switch in there. The wallpaper pack is essentially Daiji Show's theme. 
I usually use Electful NX as I love the wallpapers for the systems. If you add a new platform to your console, you're going to have to go back and re-download this wallpaper again to get the new themes for it. You can also swap this quite easily at any time. Those wanting a little bit more customizable options for their front end with visuals might want to look more at Pegasus. Feel free to experiment to see what you like best. I also recommend using the dark theme, especially if you like to play games in the evening or a dark room. Choose your favorite color in the themes color option menu. And if you're using the dark theme, I also recommend using the pure dark theme to make it even darker. The pure dark theme is excellent, especially if you're using an OLED panel or want a darker UI. There's not much else on this menu here that I like to switch, but you can also switch the A and B buttons if you prefer an Xbox style layout on the front end. That's definitely an option that I recommend enabling as I'm more used to that layout myself. In the navigation menu, the home page is great to change, especially if you want to boot directly into a specific menu. I usually swap it to the standard platforms page. We can also assign hotkeys in this menu and toggle the widgets page if we don't want it. Since I want to keep Daiji Show up on my unit, I don't need the last option selected to exit the front end. If you want to keep Daiji Show up, make sure you have this option disabled. In the video and sound menu, we can disable things like button sounds as that tends to get annoying over time, at least in my opinion. I don't like having the extra sounds when I'm pressing buttons, so I'm going to go ahead and disable that for now. This is of course just a personal choice, and if you prefer them, you can leave them enabled. Further down the list in the options, we can set up retro achievements for the front end widgets. We can also back up our Daiji Show settings to our Google account in the settings menu. This is an excellent feature, especially if you have multiple emulation devices. And with that, we've definitely gone through all the settings and personalized it to our liking. Let's go ahead and proceed with linking the games to our front end. Tap on the pass button and add a path to your game folder for the system that you've selected. Select add more and navigate to the folder where your games are stored. For me it's on the SD card in the emulation folder, then ROMs, then finally Dreamcast. This may take a little while to sync all your systems depending on how many you need to go through. Once you've navigated to the correct folder, click use this folder to finalize your selection. Make sure to tap on allow and then sync the folder. While that's syncing, we can go ahead and move to the next system. Since this is the same process for each system, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit. Just make sure you select the correct folder for each system, then click Tap Sync for each selected one. This may take a little while depending on the number of systems you have, but it's pretty straightforward. Feel free to skip to the next timestamp once you've completed this process. Once the syncing is done, we need to test the systems to make sure that they all launch. Open up a system of your choice, I'm going to go ahead and use Dreamcast since that's the first one that I synced. Tap on a game and it should load everything up if it's set up correctly. Tap on one of your favorite games and load it up to see if it works. It seems to work fine and everything looks great, so let's proceed to the next system. Go ahead and test the rest of your systems until you find one that isn't working correctly. All the RetroArch hotkeys seem to be working as well. Game Boy Advance seems to be having issues, so let's go ahead and close that for now and check under the config. Press the home button and go back to the main settings menu, then click the little pencil at the bottom right corner. Then scroll down and look at the player settings. You can see that it's set to Game Boy Advance using RetroArch 64, which is correct, but the core I downloaded was the MGBA, so I'm going to have to go ahead and swap that. Make sure to save your settings and test it again to see if it works. I also selected the wrong version of RetroArch by accident, so just make sure you select the correct version that's installed on your device. I'm going to go ahead and swap this over to the RetroArch 64 version and double check to make sure that it works. It's a pretty long list, but it's alphabetized, so it should be pretty easy to find what you're looking for. With that swapped over correctly, you can see that it boots now, so we can proceed to check the rest of the systems on the console. If we want to go ahead and set up bezels on our console, we can easily return the installer by opening up Termix again. From there, press A and use the D-pad to scroll down to the bezels option, then press Y to select it. In this menu, we can enable or disable the bezels. Let's turn them on to demonstrate how they work. When you're in the bezels menu, just go ahead and say yes and it'll proceed to download the bezels for our systems. With that installed, let's start up a game to see how it looks. Game Boy looks great with the bezels on. As you can see, the aspect ratio is not displaying correctly, but we can change that by going back into the Termix menu to match our device aspect ratio. Go ahead and quit the game and head back into Termix. Scroll down until you see the Nintendo or the Sega aspect ratio and go ahead and select those menus. 
Unfortunately, you have to go through these one at a time, so go ahead and start with the Nintendo one and see if you can find a better aspect ratio for your panel. You can always go back and change these options at any time, so even if you select the wrong one, don't worry about it, you can just go back and swap them over. To turn off on-screen notifications in RetroArch, we need to navigate to the settings menu to disable them. Scroll down to the on-screen display options, then select on-screen overlay, and then finally turn off the overlay. This will go ahead and disable the on-screen controls if we're playing on a device with a built-in controller. As with any settings changes in RetroArch, make sure to go to your RetroArch configuration and save that before leaving. With that fixed, let's go back and double check all our systems to make sure that they're booting correctly. With Game Boy Advance fixed, we can quickly check the rest of the systems. I noticed there was also an issue on the DS system. I loaded up a game here and it wasn't working, it was just simply a black screen. That usually means that the player isn't selected correctly. Let's go ahead and back out of this menu and make sure everything is shut off first, then click on the little pencil in the bottom right corner to check the player settings. You can see by default it's selected the Melon Core in the RetroArch 64 app. I highly recommend using Drastic, so let's go ahead and select that. With Drastic selected, make sure to save the changes and proceed to launch the game. If you forgot to install Drastic, you can go ahead and confirm and it'll take you to the Google Play Store page to download it. With the Google Play page loaded up, let's go ahead and install this. I've already purchased this, so I'm just going to go ahead and install it. We need to change a few Drastic settings before we access it from the front end. Start it up and click Load a New Game. From there, navigate to the folder that contains your Nintendo DS games. Mine are on my SD card under the emulation folder under Nintendo DS. When you navigate to the correct folder, click use this folder at the bottom to use that folder as your game folder. Now that we've given drastic access to our games folder, all the games that were previously linked should start without issues. And as you can see, the game starts perfectly fine. You can get rid of this on-screen display menu by clicking the arrow, then clicking the little control button at the top. If we want to add a new system, all we have to do is just go to the library options and download a platform. Then just go ahead and select the new system that you want to add and click import. To make sure that worked okay, all we have to do is head back to our main platforms page and tab over until we see our new system. From there, all we have to do is add the path for it. Then once you've added your game path, all you have to do is hit that sync button and it'll add your new games in. Because we've added a new system to our emulation device, we're going to have to go back and download the new wallpaper pack again. If you plan on adding multiple new systems, make sure to add them all first, then just download the wallpaper once when you're done. And if we back out of the wallpaper menu, you can see that the wallpaper has been applied to our new system that we added. It's truly amazing to see Emu Deck finally on Android. As of making this video, the setup process does take a little work, but that's mostly on the front end. It's nice to see Emu Deck taking care of the hard work when it comes to configs, bezels, and hotkeys. If you're looking for a quick and easy way to get into emulation on your Android device and don't mind a bit of a setup on the front end, this is definitely the way to go. Right now, Emu Deck is currently in beta, but I can tell that we're going to see this get way better over time. As for me, I think I'm going to be using this on all my Android devices. It's a great way to set it up and it makes it super easy. I'll make sure to provide links to everything in the description below and if you have any issues or questions don't hesitate to ask in the comments.